on the future space, even the tech uh, Nasdaq 100 might recover some of that lost ground in the Wednesday trading session. But Tony Nash joins us now. He's founder and CEO of Complete Intelligence. He's speaking to us from Houston, Texas, USA. Uh, Tony, we're seeing this pullback in the markets overnight. I don't know if it comes as a surprise to you. Is this, you know, the realization that the stimulus package might not be imminent? Is this who Biden has picked for a running mate? Or, you know, are there other factors at play here that have uh, influenced the market? You know, I think it's really more about yields than anything. Um, we've seen the impact of yields on precious metals. Uh, the impact on silver was most dramatic. Um, but with equities, yeah, we saw a little bit of a pullback then. Um, but we don't necessarily feel like equities are are in uh, at a correction point at the moment. Um, so it is a little bit about uh, it might be some political news on Joe Biden's VP candidate, but I, I don't necessarily see that being being a disappointment. I don't think there were huge expectations there. There isn't big COVID news in the U.S. Um, there's not necessarily major China news outside of the Alex Azar's visit to Taiwan and um, the Hong Kong stuff, but there, there isn't huge market impact on that. So really, it's about yields and it's about the expectation of stimulus. Right. How much further downside do you see for the markets then? So in the U.S., we think markets are fairly healthy, um, assuming stimulus is coming. Now, uh, U.S. legislators have gone for uh, the rest of the summer. Um, but there's really nothing ca uh, keeping Trump from issuing more stimulus like he did over the weekend. I mean, there are things legally, but he's issued executive orders, uh, issued an executive order over the weekend to do that. And it was uh, a fair bit of stimulus coming down the pike. So um, I think really what's missing is stimulus for small and mid-sized businesses, which we had in May, June, um, but th that really dried up at the end of July. So. Uh, we've seen almost 200,000 small businesses close in the U.S., and really the question is, will there be more stimulus there in terms of cash flow to, to help the demand issues that small and medium-sized businesses uh, are seeing in the U.S.? One of the key things that we're finding uh, over the last week, we've saw, seen a lot of clarity come around whether American kids will go back to school at the end of August or in September, and we're seeing more and more school districts uh, coming online saying, yes, they want kids back in school, many of them in person, some of them virtually, but that helps American workers uh, get back into the office as needed and where needed and gives them focus. So I would expect productivity to improve quite a lot in Q3 uh, as parents, uh, as kids are back in school and, and many of them are back there physically. But the case comes in the country. I mean, that certainly is weighing on sentiment, is it not? And, you know, the idea that the country hasn't quite got a hold on it, there is a possibility that they will have to start, stop the economy. And it's not as straightforward as, you know, just uh, going ahead with those lockdowns. When you do it a second, third time, that's just going to have this uh, permanent damage to the U.S. economy. Sure, that's right. But... I think the focus in the U.S. has really gone away from case counts. People are really looking at mortality. They're really looking at clusters. They're really looking at transmissibility, these sorts of things. And so I think in the U.S., the, the sentiment and the desire to close down, of course, you find pockets of, of desire for it. But I think generally people are kind of over it. The fear of COVID is not as intense as it was, say, two months ago. People realize that it's a disease, it's a virus, it comes and goes, the incidence rate and the death rate is actually pr fairly low. Um, the message that the U.S. has done, tens of millions of tests, uh, is getting out there as well. And so people are realizing that the high case count are very related to the tests. And this is going out through a lot of different me mechanisms at the state level and at the, at the national level in the U.S. So it's not to say it's gone. It's not to say that we have zero cases, but, you know, I, I think a lot of countries and a lot of locations that say they have zero cases, I'm not necessarily sure that the testing is being done as thoroughly as it could be. All right. We're also seeing that improvement of economic indicators in the Asian region, industrial output, some export figures look like they are on the uptrend uh, in China, for example. How much of this is going to be a divergent play East Asia versus South Asia, for example. 
Yeah, you know, we really see East Asia lagging. Although the Chinese data, like the auto data that came in yesterday, it looks it looks okay on year on year basis. It, it looks pretty good, but I'm not necessarily convinced um, that that's sustainable given the demand issues that we saw in the first half of the year. Um, I think there are, there are ongoing worries that we'll see issues in China's economy and political issues in China with Hong Kong and other places. So, you know, we're expecting East Asian markets to really not do well this month. We've expected kind of more than a 1% decline this month in, in East Asian markets generally between, say, 1% and 3% based on the market. In South Asia, because they're less China connected, we expect them to be flat to slightly down. Um, so this month, generally, we're expecting a slight pullback um, in Asia, um, but South Asia fares a, a bit better than East Asia, although it's not that dramatic. Tony, thank you very much for your time. We're speaking there to thank Tony you. Nash, founder and CEO of Complete Intelligence.